we are HFX Resilient Housing Network. I'm Maggie, these are my partners Dolly, Nick, and Alfred. Halifax is currently experiencing a housing crisis with vacancy rates at 1.6% for one bedrooms in the city. A lack of housing affects all populations but disproportionately marginalizes groups living in poverty. Having worked in a shelter for the last two years, some of the major issues fa facing youth in emergency shelters that I've witnessed are affordability and lack of supports for maintaining secure housing. Unfortunately, episodic homelessness is very common among youth and can be reduced by providing supportive housing that prioritizes eviction prevention under a Housing First framework. Although Halifax has housing services for youth in place, they are not all-encompassing and often do not allow for choice and self-determination. Nearly half of Halifax's total homeless population experienced homelessness for the first time while they were youth. By targeting youth, not only are we reducing the current, but also the future homeless population of Halifax. HFX Resilient Housing Network targets youth aged 18 to 29 experiencing homelessness, currently accessing emergency shelter, who also face mental health issues and or substance use problems. We will partner with community-based organizations, emergency shelters, and local developers to develop affordable, resilient housing. The biggest partner in this is the youth currently in emergency housing, who will brainstorm ideas through a human-centered design to create affordable, resilient housing. This process is an inclusive process that leaves the youth feeling a part of their developing city. Resilient housing will follow a housing-first approach, providing bachelor units, common space, and basic amenities for the tenants, alongside 24-hour support staff, which will be on-site to facilitate programs and case management. Resilient housing provides supportive environment for youth to transition into secure housing by learning in independent living skills such as financial and housing literacy and cooking and nutrition, as well as job readiness programs and job placements within the community that will allow on-the-job training to secure income as part of their transition into secure housing. Hi everyone. So this is the Halifax Resilient um, Housing Network. We'll be using, like Dolly mentioned, the human-centered design approach. So what this means is five steps and it embodies community collaboration and community development. And we'll start by taking that researched demographic and having them give, a, give them an opportunity, rather, to share their stories. These stories will help identify and define the challenges that they face. Then we will have them work with an interdisciplinary team to brainstorm and create ideas to address the said challenges. Um, the ideas will then be reviewed with other um, pre-existing ideas to create the most tangible um, initiative, and then this initiative will be tested and will be an invaluable source of data um, for projects moving forward. This process is vital because it gives the youth a voice and the opportunity for self-actualization as well as co-create their homes. As mentioned, we are HFX Resilient Housing Network and we are supporting local developers and housing and homelessness stakeholders to co-create a new engagement framework for resilient housing in Halifax. What we need is seed funding of 7,500 to implement this framework for our local partners. For our first pilot, we are in conversations with partners in social enterprise, emergency shelter, and other housing and homelessness stakeholders to implement this framework in Westwood's development in the north end of Halifax, Midtown North. Homelessness is an incredibly expensive problem costing our provincial government millions of dollars because homeless populations because homeless populations use emergency services at a much higher rate than individuals who are housed. HFX Resilient Network will empower young architects to change the world by not building. Danny Chadrod is proposing 60 affordable housing units in this, in this development. 
So we're hoping the Department of Living is open to allowing uh, youth have a place to stay in this province. Um, I have a, uh, so around the units, the specific units, are they self-contained units or would they be more so like boarding spaces? So I think that's what we want to really... Right, so it would depend on what the yeah, client such approach is. Yeah. Um, it's just like sort of force and dictated one. And now sort of, um, you talk about homes versus houses. Yes. Um, if we sort of just give them some sort of like plain structure uh, unit, they might not feel like they're very welcome. Um, we want them to yeah. process that. And the goal is to move them from shelter living to one year right. residence in this mm -hmm. unit. Yeah, okay. That answered my question. <laughs> <laughs> and I put all the street in there. It is. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Um, yeah, I was wondering to you, I guess the second question I had was what is uh, your plan to engage youth? I, I know you have the Phoenix Center on there, but uh, what are the other youth that you envision participating in, in a space where they may not traditionally feel welcome or uh, around a topic where they may have already felt disenfranchised from conversations with them? So I was just wondering how you plan on skilling up uh, folks to be able to participate in these conversations. Um, yeah, so we've, uh, we've spoken to job placements and how you envision that working. So the same way we're going to partner with community organizations, there's many uh, government programs that encourage businesses to hire youth, especially during the summer, and we will use those grants and different networks to motivate the business owners to use, to have the youth employed by them, and the future is the youth, so it's it's a, it's a beneficial uh, collaboration between two parties. We also, at, uh, at the Midtown Development, they are uh, including retail space, and so just being already in conversations with them, we haven't brought, brought it up yet, but you know, if that could be a possibility for us, it would be a great opportunity for you. And if, if I might add, um, it's really just sort of like collaborative process that we're really like killing that as a buzzword, sorry. Um, <laughs> but the idea is really to partner with other organizations that sort of parallel um, those um, those missions. So like maybe Hope Blooms, like someone mentioned, um, just as well to create some sort of retail um, collaboration because we don't want to obviously put them in a the workplace where they might not feel comfortable. Um, they might not be ready to transition yet. Um, but just as well, in, in terms of the KT or <coughs> translation data, um, that might be something that we might need the funding for. So it would be nice to, yeah, obviously, have something that Phoenix, but yeah, if we want to meet them, we need we need funding to create that those sort of um, those sort of maybe focus groups and how to like sort of meet with them where they're at. If that makes sense. Nice.